as with all kinds of research, good research design needs to be ethically robust. And to achieve this, there are a number of issues the researcher needs to think about. One of these ethical issues is around access, that is accessing human participants, or the way in which your research design might include or exclude potential participants from your research. In relation to online research, we are going to look at the ways in which internet access might result in the potential exclusion of suitable participants from your research. Conducting research online isn't simply a case of replicating face-to-face -face offline data collection methods online. Some internet res researchers focus on the cultures of or behaviours in online spaces and use research approaches that are specifically appropriate to or designed in response to this kind of research. For the examples referred to here in this presentation, we are focusing on data collection using online tools for research. Though the research may not be specifically about online activities and could be conduct conducted offline. We can also refer to this as remote fieldwork. It is worth mentioning br br briefly that for many internet researchers, the distinctions between offline and online are not always clear and there is some blurring. We don't need to explore that in any more detail here. Access or the ability to participate in research should be seen as an ethical issue as this raises questions about who is included and excluded from participating in research. In your research design, you will be expected to outline your approach to sampling and your plans for recruiting your sample. You will be expected to consider the strengths and limitations of your approach. For example, in considering whether your approach might result in a biased sample and the consequences for your research of this. Similar issues need to be considered when planning to conduct research online, but it is also important not to present online tools as an unproblematic solution to recruitment and participation. Online tools might be presented as a solution to problems of not being able to meet in person. For example, you might consider using online tools as they offer your research the prospect of recruiting participants in geographically remote locations. The social distancing and lockdown measures resulting from the COVID-19 pandemic have prompted a pivot to online tools. However, online tools don't simply transcend barriers such as geographical dispersion. Firstly, internet access is a nebulous term, and this will be illustrated with examples as we proceed through this presentation. Research on digital inequalities, represented here by a sliced onion, reveals patterns of ownership, access and use that researchers need to be aware of when considering doing research online. And for, and for further information on digital inequalities, see the recent work by Van Dyck. Access to online tools might be shaped geographically with uneven levels of access take up and use in different places. Similarly, other factors such as age, class, ethnicity and income can impact on access to digital tools and which may mean you're more likely to recruit participants with particular dem demographics. We can look at this quote from Mann and Stewart. They observed that access to the internet is a matter not only of economics, but also of one's place in the world in terms of gender, culture, ethnicity and language. So, in other words, technologies and the ability to access the internet are far from ubiquitous. 
Some people are able to access and use these tools more readily than others. And this can impact on who we recruit as participants in our research. And therefore, we should be aware of these digital inequalities. Returning to the earlier point about internet access being a nebulous term, we can see that access to the internet means different things. It can mean that someone has high speed broadband at home and work and can therefore be online at almost any time. For some people, home access might come with slow internet speeds and the data caps. It can also mean that someone is only able to access the internet via a smartphone with mobile data and is therefore restricted on the amount of data that they can access. Hasetzi and Rain's uh, research in the United States looks at smartphone dependence, where the only means of accessing the internet is through a smartphone. Their research found that minority groups, younger people, those on low income and those with lower levels of educational qualifications are more likely to be smartphone dependent. That means they've, the smartphone is the only way that they can access the Internet. So if you are asking people to complete a survey online or take part in an Internet mediated interview, you should consider the extent to which the digital tools that that they have will enable this. Interviewing online may require the participant to download an app such as Skype or Zoom. This assumes the participant has the equipment with which to do this. Uh, they may not. So, for example, if someone is only able to access the Internet via a mobile phone, they might not have enough storage space to download a, a app, which um, takes up a lot of space. Or they might not have the data to be able to use it. Therefore, you need to think about which participants are likely to be included and excluded through your research and the consequences of this. Access to equipment for some participants might not be stable. Chiu Mento et al. describe how interviewers in their study in, in a post-conflict setting had to work around participants who had issues with power cuts and computer batteries running low. And these issues are not restricted to post-conflict situations. Turning to home internet access, Schurder et al. discuss internet use in the home, drawing on the concept of habitus to illustrate the different attitudes towards internet use as well as patterns of use in different households. So there are different skill levels and preparedness for using the internet for specific purposes, with these differing according to socio-economic characteristics. Hartnett's research reveals socio-economic differences in young people's digital home lives where, for example, a laptop might be shared amongst all members of the household. So. This suggests that even where participants might ostensibly have access to digital tools, their ability to secure access to them or ensure privacy whilst using them might not be p p possible. And this is something to bear in mind as a researcher. If you want to do a one-to-one -one interview with somebody, privacy might be important for the participant. In short, online tools do not necessarily enable participation, though they might well enable the participation of some people who otherwise could not have participated in your research. Good, ethically sound research design considers who the research includes and excludes. You may need to think about your research 
design and how the tools you use for data collection either serve to include or exclude participants. There may not be a solution to this, but you need to consider the consequences of this for your research. 